Hello, thank you for joining me. This is our second video in our series, How to Use the eDrawing Viewer, uh, supplied or provided by uh, SolidWorks. Uh, the eDrawing Viewer it gives you the ability to uh, download an eDrawing uh, model that was saved in the SolidWorks format and other formats too, by the way. We have uh, viewers for different uh, applications for like maybe Autodesk products and whatnot. But uh, for this one, it's a SolidWorks assembly. And uh, you need to make sure that the SolidWorks assembly was saved in an eDrawing format. And it gives you the ability to import that into an eDrawing viewer free uh, to eDrawingsViewer.com. So what we did in the last video, this is our second video in the series, we uh, looked at all the items over here in the manager area, all the tools over here. A lot of the tools over here are also redundant to uh, the tools up here on, uh, on the menu. But let's go ahead and go through the, the top menu up here and take a look at some of these tools up here too and see what we can do with those. First of all, some of these uh, stamps that we put in here from our last video, uh, especially the void one, it could be rather offensive to people. So we're going to go ahead and take that out unless it's uh, something that really drastically needs to be voided. Uh, just kidding about that, but uh, I would be offended if somebody took, put a big void in a model I spent hours on. But anyways, uh, yeah, you want to take uh, care of those things and probably take those out. Let's go ahead and uh, go to the top and uh, go through some of the uh, menu items up here. So, zoom to fit, that's the same as the F key as I've been talking about. You could do the very same thing with the F key. If you're zooming in and out by using the middle mouse button, uh, scrolling, and it gets uh, away from you there, the F key brings it back, but also the zoom to fit, which uh, does the same thing. That's where the F comes in, it means fit. The zoom area. If you click on zoom area and want to look at something very specifically, uh, very closely, you can do that. You can just draw a window with the left mouse button clicked. Draw a rectangle and it gets you right there. If, uh, when you're all done with that, you want to go to zoom to fit, that takes you back. Zoom, uh, the up and down arrow, what that allows you to do with your left mouse button, if you take your mouse button and scroll it up and down, it uh, goes up and down with that. So it, uh, it's kind of zoom in and out depending on the, you know, the location of your cursor as it's moving up and down on the screen. Rotate uh, allows you to do it uh, again with the left mouse button. With the rotate button on, it allows you to rotate your model around when you're all done, you want to go to zoom to fit. Now the middle mouse button will allow you to do the same thing. If you do the middle mouse button and depress that and rotate uh, your mouse around, it also rotates there too. Pan allows you to move uh, the model without uh, zooming in and out. Left, right, up, or down, at bottom. It just uh, takes the window that you're looking at the model and moves the window around so you can see the model in a different uh, view up, down, or left, or right. Shaded. Take your model and unshade it, or you can shade it. Shade it with edges is typically what we're looking at here. Uh, perspective is kind of nice. Uh, allows you to look at your model. Sometimes it just doesn't look right when you're looking at it this way, where the dimensions in front are the same, or the you know the representation. What you see a circle as a circle up front, it's the same as in the back. You would expect that if you're looking at the back of the model being further away, that uh, it would actually appear further away. And that's where perspective comes in. So now it's a little bit bigger up here. A little bit smaller down there. Sometimes it's a little bit easier on the eye. It all depends on uh, what you use to. You might want to use that perspective button or not. Uh, the select button allows you to uh, go back to the select tool. If you're on pan and you have that pan symbol over where your cursor is, select tool will actually take you back to where the, the pointing uh, cursor, the, the one that we're typically used to seeing. That comes back. Home. Home takes us back to the original view that we that we had when we imported the, imported the model, which might be the isometric view, and that all, that's also uh, relevant too. If you go to the play button, like we went through before, it goes through the different views that are set up: front, top, right, left, uh, back, front uh, views, and the isometric view. Home allows you to get out of that real quick, and it takes you right back to the view that the uh, model was imported at. Uh, mass properties. If you want to find out what the, the properties of uh, your object are here, like the, the part of the assembly as we see, it, it'll give that to you. Here you can establish your uh, units up here, inches, uh, millimeters, feet. Basically it just uh, goes back and forth between standard and uh, English units, but you can go down to uh, very small units like millimeters up to uh, meters and uh, feet and inches and whatnot. You can uh, vary the decimal places if you want to do that. And once you do that, uh, once you have that set up, it tells you what uh, what the mass properties are. It starts up here with material. Not really specified, but it's an assembly. I think there are a variety of different materials in here, so it's not going to tell you that. If you're in a part, if you're in that part and play ca playing carbon steel, it'll show that here. If there's a variety of materials, it may not show it, or if the materials were not defined initially, it's not going to show that either. I'll show you what the density is, what the mass is going to be. That's 31 pounds for that cylinder. That seems about right. 
and the volume is 175 uh, cubic inches. It's pretty big. And the surface area gives you that too. So those are your mass properties. Uh, you can do length. Uh, it, it gives it to you in length. Um, and then again, as I mentioned before, you have the different units in there, and then you can establish the decimal places. So it was a little bit redundant, but uh, there you have it again. So for mass properties, then you have your player up here. I uh, went through this in a previous film, but um, uh, when you go to the play button, it goes through the different views. So you can modify the views here too. So reorder views, it's going to start with the isometric view, which is which it is uh, on right now. If we go to or something very similar to that, and it brings it in a kind of an isometric view when it uh, opens up the model. And you go through the different views up here, and you can uh, rearrange these views tier too, and then go back to play, and it'll go through those views. So it's going to start with the top view up here, then go to the isometric, go to the front, back, right, left, and bottom. And that's what that play button is for. If you want to go to stop, you can do that. If you want to go to the next button, you can do that relatively quickly rather than go through the play button. Actually, it isn't very quick here, but uh, it does give you that option. So now we have our measure. This takes us back to the managers up here as we covered in the other video. You have your measure, you have your section, and you have your stamps you can put in here. And uh, yeah, and drag those in there just like we did before. And if you want to deactivate these, just like you did, you can go into the into the toolbar up here by way of the manager and deactivate it that way or deactivate it this way. It gets you back to where you were before. And if you don't like that comment, you can get rid of that. So now the, the final toolbar section up here, you can go to open, it'll open up a different uh, E drawings uh, drawing. Go to save, if you want to save this with your markups, as uh, remember before we do have some markups in here. And if you want to save that, uh, now it's time to do it, you can go to the save button and it'll save it. Either resave over the file that originally was, or you go up here to file the pull down menu and go to save as. That way you can keep the original one and have the markup, maybe have the original one and add the extra nomenclature to it that would say markup to it. Now that uh, would do that for you. So you have open, save, print. You can print this out. You know, print it out in a, you know, whatever format you like. Probably not the 3D printer. You have to do that in STL format or some other format, but, uh, you know, you go through your regular printer options that you have. Send. As you send as an eDrawings file, as an attachment, uh, zip file, you can do that. Uh, looks like my eDrawings is in 32-bit, but I have 64-bit, 64-bit uh, is available. But uh, right now it's just 32-bit. Uh, you can save it as an HTML, uh, kind of a web page sort of thing, or an executable uh, format. So you have a couple different options there when it comes to sending that. And help, if you need help, click on the help button. And uh, it will typically go through, uh, kind of over here, it goes in the web and goes through the typical help format that might be available by way of the SolidWorks website. So that's it. That's my toolbar uh, demonstration for eDrawings. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's informative. And we're not going to do that. We're going to close Internet Explorer because we like Firefox and uh, we like Chrome too. So join me for some other videos.